I know how you feel, but do I really know how you feel? Romans 8.28 says this, For we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. When I think of this verse, the, the one thing I want to share with you as we move through this topic is never use this verse in the middle of a crisis with somebody. This is a verse that's awesome when we look backwards, when we see how God has actually worked, as we look for how God is working. But in the middle of a crisis, when we try to use this verse with young people, we're, we're really pouring salt into a wound. And, and at times where salt can heal a wound, we got to be careful of the pain that that causes in that process. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you with that. Be careful how you use this. It is a biblical principle. I'm not going to deny that. And it's something that I can look back and see how God used different things in my life. And even as we talk, this verse, this principle is going to come out. But be careful in the middle of a crisis and trying to use this to soothe things for somebody because it really typically doesn't soothe. I just lost my brother to death. He was 11 years older than me uh, and just had his funeral this past week. So this, this aspect of the tragedy occurring, I definitely do understand in that way of losing my brother. And this is the first brother that I've lost. Uh, and so this is a different thing for me. I've lost my father. I've lost all my grandparents, but I've never lost actually a brother. And, and so this was different. And, and in thinking in those terms, it started me thinking about this as well as some things I was teaching our teenagers to be able to share this video with you today. I was talking with one of the church members here who's a little younger than me and lost his father also to death. And he was sharing how that while they were in the receiving line at the funeral home, a good friend of his was there in the line, shook his hand and looked him in the eye and said, I know how you feel. And this friend, this church member was looking at me and he said, here's the problem, Rick. He said, the guy's dad was standing right behind him. And then he went on to say, I wanted to punch him in the face. Sometimes we think I know how you feel or other trite sayings or the right things to say, but we need to be careful with what we say when we're dealing with teens, when we're dealing with others and even church people, family members in the area of the tragedy that's occurred in their life. One thing that sometimes we need to learn in ministry is we don't always need an answer. Matter of fact, sometimes a non-answer is better than trying to come up with an answer. So be careful with trying to think you need to answer for everything because you really don't need an answer for everything. What you need is what we, I call the ministry of presence. That aspect of just being there for a friend. Being there to be willing to pray with this person. Even if your prayer is, I don't have an answer, but I'm still calling out to God to guide us and direct us. That's better than, than any kind of trite answer you come up with, something that you want to say, oh, well, the Bible, you know, so be careful with that. The Bible does have some scriptures at times for us to gain comfort from, but sometimes we just need somebody to be near us. And so that ministry of presence is so key. God does use our past and he allows us to use our past in ministry situations. I was talking to our, some of our teens the other week and we were talking a little bit about this aspect of how God uses things within our past for his honor and his glory. My grandmother passed away when I was 16 years old. I still remember that and how you know I handled it. I still remember like I, I didn't get with the family in the driving lane in the in the processional. I actually was at the back of the processional because I just I wanted to I, there was a desire to be disconnected. But since then, and being in youth ministry 30 some years, there's been a lot of times I have been at the graveside of a grandparent to a teen where that teenager is in the middle of their teen years when their grandparent passes. And I've been able to look at them and say, I know how you feel. Why? Because I know how they felt. Because of the fact that I also walked down that path. I've been asked to resign churches before. 
The first one, probably my fault because I was pretty young and arrogant. The other's not really my fault. But let me tell you what that's done. It's allowed me to, when I hear of a youth minister uh, who's been asked to resign their church, forced out, to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I just want you to know, I know how you feel. Let's go do lunch. Let's go do supper, breakfast, whatever fits your schedule so I can listen to your story. So you can begin that process of sharing your side of the story in a safe spot because I know what I went through when I was asked to resign. I know the emotions, I know the hurt, I know the pain that that causes. And, and so being able to use those past situations to help somebody is where Romans 8.28 really comes into play. Just be careful when you're coming alongside somebody. If you say, I know how you feel, it's because you really do. You've experienced something very similar. Other than that, look at the ministry of presence, the ministry of quiet, when you're dealing with a hurting teen. So when you're dealing with a hurting teen, I jotted down a few things to just share with you uh, about this concept. And the first is to be there for them. Be willing to be there for them. If they need you there, that you can take some time, that you can spend time with them, uh, that, that you're going to be there. That ministry of presence is so key. <clears throat> Next is make sure you're Holy Spirit filled in anything that you say. Make sure that, that you've prayed up heading to that time to be with that teenager, that you're sensing what the Spirit has for you, that you're looking to say something God wants you to, not something you feel like you need to. And then love them towards God's truth more than you preach or tell them God's truth. Look for opportunities to love them towards the truths of God. The truths of God are real, but in the middle of hurt, somebody needs to love you that direction, not just kind of spit it out at you or beat you over the head with God's word, so to speak. And so be loving and kind in that and look for ways to love them towards the principles that God has laid out, even in the midst of tragedy. A story I want to close with, I heard on the radio, it was on James Dobson's radio show, but it was a man whose daughter had been in a car wreck, and in the process, her legs had gotten cut off. A good man that knew the family saw him at a restaurant months later, about six or seven months later, and he walks up to the guy's table and he says these words. He says, you know, isn't it wonderful how God used the wreck of your daughter to give revival to our church? This man said he in the restaurant looked at this other guy and he says you know and i know that revival only lasts about six months and there's not enough of my daughter to keep this church in revival when i heard that i broke down and i just i cried and i was driving at the time i had to pull off the side of the road i was crying so hard for the times that i may have said stuff that really wasn't spirit filled that wasn't honoring to the lord that wasn't beneficial to the person but i felt like as a minister i need to give an answer i want to encourage you to be spirit-filled, to be there for people, not always worried about giving an answer uh, because many times just the presence is what you need and showing the love of God to these people. I want to thank you for watching. I hope this has helped you some in some of the crisis situations uh, that we find ourselves in in ministry. And definitely in the early days, we're not even sure what to do in those crisis situations. So I hope that this has helped you. Feel free to leave a comment, a hurt, a pain that's down there in the message if you want to, to be able to have some inter interaction, some dialogue with either myself or others who watch this video. So feel free to, to follow up in that way. Also then, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, I, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. I put out a video about once a week, once every other week. Uh, I'm taking 30 years plus youth ministry experience, trying to throw this down then on a video just to allow us to, to be able to share together from, for me to give some insight of some things I learned. I will tell you that there's nobody who's an expert. I'm not an expert in this. I'm just a guy who's been doing it for a long time. Thank you once again for watching this. Take care.